Just tell me when you're ready. Ready to go. Okay, folks. Uh, today I've got a KTM 300 XC. It's a 2023 model. I've done the review on the 2022 and gone into detail about um, the good and bad with that bike. And you know, most of it was good, and most of the problems I had with that bike were my problems from different things that I'd done to the bike, not so much the bike itself, although I did have trouble with the air forks leaking right from day one. Um, I think I've resolved that problem. It was something to do with people not working enough during COVID or something, so we'll see. But this is the bike, so just going over it, I'm going to do another little review when we're finished riding, um, but I'm going to talk about a couple of things that I've noticed straight away. Um, so if you... you have a look at this the the radiator cap on these is pretty much useless um it's nearly un impossible to undo you've got to push it down and turn it like a normal radiator cap but it also has the hose coming off it so really they've screwed that up bad um there's something else the, the rumor is that the guy's son who owns ktm the son designed the cap and something else that was not real good on the bike so um, we're just going to blame it on him, but luckily, unless it's leaking, I never really have, really check it. Um, people get real anal about checking those sorts of things. I don't do that. I just keep riding it, and unless it's leaking, don't need to check it. So that's one thing. The next thing is, uh, change out the brake tip here. Um, got one of my brake tips on it. They come back a bit further. Um, KTM since 2017 have had a habit of making the brake pedal way too long and from 15 upwards they kept getting longer and longer so in 17 they changed the pedal design and this is slimmer than the last like the 22 model um, but they still need it so what I do put the brake tip on that comes back a fair bit I should have grabbed the other one to show but never mind and it, it brings it back so that when you're going down a hill, you can easily get onto the brake pedal with your, your, your boot hooked into the foot peg. Now, the foot pegs are also quite a bit bigger. So when you look at that and compare the size, that's where the pin goes through. They're quite a bit bigger and they look to be a little bit tougher than the old foot pegs. The old foot pegs were... These ones used to just get dinged up and break and snap and... They were good because they cleaned out real nice if you're riding in the snow, but other than that, they were pretty much, pretty much uh, shitty. So I usually run the IMS one, so I'm going to see if the IMS uh, ones that drop down 5mm and come back 5mm are going to work on this bike. I'm not sure if they're going to, but uh, we'll try that after I've been out for a ride today. Um, the rear shock... Once again, they've put a plastic um, preload adjuster on it. Um, pretty much nearly impossible to turn in the bike. So that's a real problem again. Um, I know it's about $300 for the adjustable one. I run the adjustable one. You can just get in there and just turn it gently with a, with a, with a wrench. So that works out a lot better. The back wheel uses, I've changed the back wheel for the ride today. I've actually put the wheel off my other bike onto it because it's a, a soft gummy tire. Um, so don't worry about the wheel being a little bit beat up. That's off the other bike. Um, they do run a smaller axle, but the same wheel is interchangeable if you um, change out the spacers. So just change out the spacers and you're good to go on that. Now, this is a 22 stock muffler off the off the. 300 XC and you can see the size of it substantially bigger than the one on the new bike um, These are not got a spark arrestor in you need to run a spark arrestor and we'll cover that on Christmas bike in a, in a, in a sec, but uh, Just gives you an example that the noise is about the same and that's a pretty big Bit of muffler that they don't have anymore. They've just run this little shorty and it seems to work fine now, another thing I noticed, and this might work okay for girls out in the bush trying to move their bikes around, but KTM's gone and put these grab-grab handles in. Now, I commend them 100% for putting a grab handle in, but there's a problem with it. The grab handle is way too close to the center line of the bike. So what ends up happening is when you're trying to move the bike around, you're literally trying to lift the whole bike. 
which becomes, it's just a drama because you don't want to try and lift the bike. You want to be grabbing it back here and then just dragging the back wheel over. Or else you're going to get pretty exhausted pretty quick trying to get your bike out of a situation. So commend them on doing it. And it's also the intake for the, for the air filter. But um, really, it needs to be back here somewhere, back somewhere that you can actually get some leverage to move your bike. That's just not even going to work for me, and it's also not got any sort of hook on it to, to grip your fingers into. It, it's, it just slides out. Like, if you've got wet gloves, that's not going to work at all. So, um, they've got an electronic power valve on them. Um, I'm going to just turn the bike around here. Um, electronic power valve, I don't know how... Oh, okay. <laughs> Before we get to the power valve, let's get to the kickstand. So, the idea of a kickstand is so you can kick it. But, I've got this just with sneakers on and I can't barely get my foot in there to bring the kickstand down. The previous model had a really crappy kickstand and the kickstand would try and, fall, the spring would fall off all the time. But now it's a beautiful kickstand and really well engineered, but you can't get your foot onto it to get it down. So a lot of people are going to be ending up uh, sort of going like this to get their kickstand down, which you really don't want to do. It's a kickstand, you need to be able to kick it down. So that's that. Uh, electronic power valve up in here. Um, time will tell how that's going to go. Um, different versions on different bikes. Um, KTMs use a mechanical one all its life until now, uh, it's going to be interesting. Different reset procedures and things for it, which you never had to have with the mechanical one. Uh, that's going to be interesting to see long term. And also too, we've got a lot of cables that just sort of stick out here. Um, that's sort of like kind of concerning. I guess you could tuck them in and zip tie them back, but anything that's going to get snagged from branches is going to be a problem. So. I would suggest zip tying these things back as far as you can to get them out of the way of sticks and rocks. Um, they come with a skid plate that doesn't have a, a linkage, a linkage um, guard on it. So that's something to consider on the bike. The new chain guide here looks to be a bit more beefy. I can imagine you can still bend them as easy as any other ones. But it looks like the swing arm is much stronger because these tabs in the past had a habit of uh, breaking off under hard use. Now, just remember too, when you're looking at this, this has got a steel sprocket, but it's got my other wheel on it. Um, this is a 51, but I did notice that the stock wheel, the stock gearing, is a little bit different. And uh, I didn't really have a look to see what um, number it is here. It's... Uh, it's not the how many teeth here we go it's a 49 so I don't know what the ratios on the gearbox are but that could be something that you, people are going to have to change because that seems pretty high geared to me um, I'm not sure what sprocket they've got on the front I haven't counted it yet but just by looking at it there it looks like a 14 so fairly high geared the 14 49 <laughs> is a really high gearing usually you're running a 13 50 or 1351 so originally in 2017 the bikes came out with the 1350 and then they put a 1351 on I think but this seems really high geared so we'll see what happens with that um, I've talked to a few people and they've told me that the handlebars are a little awkward I'm going to find that out today if they're awkward or not. So I can't really comment now until I ride it and we're going to get out on the trail soon and ride it. A lot of people change out the bars to different ones. So I have my favourite bars. Other people have their favourite bars too. So other than that, I really can't say much more until we get riding. But I am going to go through Christmas bike here, which she's been riding for a little while. So I'm going to grab the camera off her. <laughs> we're going to see Buddy down here oh. just... Keeping an eye on things. So, what are the little things that you've done with your bike since you've uh, since you've got it, other than riding it a lot? Yeah, 
just other than riding, uh, there's a couple of things that I just changed uh, to make it a little bit more comfortable for myself. Uh, I'm five foot four, so I'm not a very tall rider. So there's a couple of things I did change with the suspension just to soften it up a little bit. I made sure to set my sag at 105 millimeters. I also just ended up doing the comfort setting recommended by KTM from the manual. So I did so soften up the front fork a little bit. I do find that it's still a little bit sticky in the mid progression, but other than that, I do find that it is really plush for a stock bike. I've never been able to ride a stock bike out of the box. Uh, so that was the first thing that I did. Um, I did also change the handlebars. I do prefer a more lower handlebar. Uh, so I did put a 27 millimeter rise bar from Astra Off-Road. A couple of other things that so, I did. So just with the handlebar there, that, so that's, yeah. a, that's a rise that's um, a, a rise from zero, is it? Or is it a rise, so it's lower than the factory bar though, isn't it? Because it, it, it looks is, like lower than the factory bar. It is quite a bit lower. So that's a rise from zero, I believe, up um, oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So it does also have a little bit less sweep than the stock bar does, which right. I prefer. Um, I don't love how long they are um, on this bike. I find that having a bit of a shorter bar might be a little bit more advantageous. Uh, but other than that, I really do like the setup the way that it is right now. I did also drop my fork down uh, to the third line. Uh, so just to bring my front end down just Okay, a get bit. it to turn in a little bit better, yep. Yeah, so I find that the bike turns a lot faster. It just feels a little bit more nimble around corners and things like that. Um, so those are the main things that I did to kind of change just the overall feel and, you know, chassis of the bike. Uh, then I also put a shorter brake tip on. So I have that same brake tip uh, that Reese has. This one actually came off my gas gas, so I have about 150 hours on this thing oh, now. It's going pretty good with all the riding in the rocky terrain around here. Yeah, exactly, and uh, it's just got a little bit of wear coming on here now, but it's holding up fantastic, and I can actually reach the brake tip, uh, especially when I'm going downhill. I did also just bring the brake tip up a little bit. Yep. Um, so I also put on a gummy tire in the back. I don't have a moose in it right now. I just wanted to get a feel for the bike before I put extra weight in the rear. So that's the Dunlop 8081 EX. That's correct. It's the same tire that I'm running on the back of that bike for today, which I usually have been running lately because the Metis 454 is a little bit tricky to get. So and how do you find that tire? It's really good. Absolutely love it. It's probably been my favorite enduro tire for the terrain that we have here. It's super gummy. It actually lasts and holds up in the terrain. Uh, it doesn't quite chunk away like some of the other tires. I have run the Midas as well. I think it's very comparable uh, between the two, but I prefer this one. It's just a little bit more gummy, a little bit more sticky. Um, yeah. I also put my FMF uh, pipe on. So uh, this mainly for the reason of the spark arrestor. So for the local race series in BC, you do need to run a spark arrestor, you know, keep the forest guys happy um, and make sure that, you know, we're being responsible riders out there and uh, not starting any fires. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Today, for the sake of our ride on the <laughs> on the new bike there, uh, we don't really have to worry about it because of the rain. So yeah, that's going to that's going to be all good. And you're running a SX S skid plate. That's right. So I did end up changing this out because I did want the linkage guard. I do find that this also does wrap around a little bit higher. So it's just a little bit more case protection on both sides. And then all the way, it just mounts in exactly the same spots like the KTM one does, but you get that full coverage and it has two pieces here. So it doesn't wear all the way doesn't through. Doesn't bang through, yeah. And I also see that they've changed the mounting, mounting on the skid plates on the 23 models. Instead of just having the clip in the back, which sometimes if you got the bike caught over a log, it would actually pull the back of the plastic skid plate off. Um, so now they've bolted it on. So even if you got that stuck um, on, on a log, the skid plate's not gonna come off. So exactly. that's, that's pretty cool. And it still has the hook in there. So it's kind of like- a, Oh, okay, it a, does have that too. Yeah, yep. so it's a dual like mounting system, I guess. It just, it feels really hardy, really in there. Um, so yeah, so I did end up putting that one on as well. I did also just move my levers in a little bit further, um, just so yep, I can get have... a little bit more leverage. So I see here you've got it in a fair bit. I just moved the one on the other bike in too. Yeah. Um, they run a 10 millimeter master cylinder, but a lot of the races all use a nine millimeter. And if you're wondering what the nine millimeter is off, I believe it's off a couple of models of the 350 four stroke bikes, but. No one can really tell me because it doesn't have a part number. It's one of these sort of pro hacks that uh, people have. Spencer Wilton 
um, supplied me mine after I lent him one and he brought another one back. So what else you got going on here? Uh, so I also have a uh, billet aluminum uh, rad guard. So I do like to run the one piece instead of the two piece system, okay. mainly for the reason the rads can still move individually if you do smack them into things. With the one piece, they don't move quite as much and you won't be pinching any hoses. I just find it's a little bit more stable. The only thing um, I did notice that it is rubbing on the rear fender here, or the rear of my front fender. So I'm just gonna just lop off about, yeah, you know, yeah. about an inch or so, just to kind of stop that. It's just very minor, but you do notice it a little bit when you are turning. Oh, absolutely. The for, the, for the protection it's giving here, it looks, uh, it looks pretty stable. And I've seen on some other videos as well online where people are getting these and this is the emperor one i believe That's it's the emperor, em emperor racing, yeah. emperor racing one yeah. um i think taco moto taco moto down in the states put them on their bikes as well yeah. i i personally don't run radiator guards um i've really only damaged one in really 10 years but uh i find the stock ones work pretty good yeah. but for people that are riding gnarly stuff all the time and sliding the bikes down the rocks it it's probably it. a really good idea yeah. yeah and even just for like branches and uh, sticks and things like that i actually rode with a guy who got a branch through the plastic uh like stock yep. radiator guards went straight through all the way into his gas tank so Ooh, geez, yeah. i find that it's just a little bit more a bit more a protection mind. and the bike doesn't overheat it still gets enough flow everything's good absolutely yeah really Perfect. great airflow i mean there's so many like vent holes yeah here. i guess it, it's uh it's not like a flat plate, it's actually thin, so yeah, it is running through much easier. Yeah. And does have a bit of a gap in between. Yeah, so well, other so. than having to just take a little bit off the bottom of the front fender, which is not really a drama and take five minutes to do, that's a, a really good good modification to do on the bike. And I see it's bolted right through it here on the, on the shrouds as well. Yeah. And then I did also just put on the KTM... Um, so KTM parts, they have these little caps here just for the bottom of the fork tubes. Okay. Because the rebound clickers are at the bottom, uh, on previous bikes, they actually broke off because you do smack them from time to time on rocks and logs right, and things okay. like that. So I did put that on just to protect the clickers. Yep. Um, and just also just protecting. The aluminum is kind of soft, and every time you do bash it, it just bashes like all the corners of your nuts, and it makes it a little bit harder to take you off. You don't want to bash your nuts. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> That's um, nasty. So I just did put, uh, end up putting that one there. I am still waiting on the... Um, rotor guards for both the front and the rear to come okay, out. Okay, yeah, um, like the shark fin for the back and the big one for the front. Yeah, yeah, so just with the 23s, it's been a little bit limited to what's available, but that will be coming after this. Oh, okay, sweet, yeah. So the bottom of the previous forks, what they had is on the 22 models, they had an adjuster on the bottom that was a plastic knob that you could turn, which was really good that they had that, but they didn't put the plastic cap on like on the previous models. So what they've done is the old ones had, you needed to use the screwdriver and they had a plastic cap that covered it and it, so it didn't fill up with mud. But um, the little plastic turn handle adjuster knob, you could, you could say that it was probably a little bit vulnerable under there for sure. And you're running a uh, little pull strap here. Yeah, so just from Trailbound Co. So it is nice and handy for the days when we're doing a little bit more hard enduro style riding, um, you know, helping us get through some of the sections. Uh, instead of someone trying to pull on the front tire, it's just a little bit more leverage. And Absolutely, yeah. It the bike up a little bit easier and their stuff's great. I, this is on my second bike now, so same thing. Really great quality, really great customer service and company to deal with. Perfect. Um, and then the only other thing that at this point that I'm still looking to do or th uh, is replace this seat so okay. i did order a lowered seat from ktm i do prefer that over actually shaving the seat the foam is a little bit different it feels different i find that with the stock seats if you do shave them it's a little bit too stiff a little bit harder yes, uh, yes. i mean not that we sit down very often but it is a little bit more uncomfortable but so. when you do you want it to you want it <laughs> yeah. to be comfortable that's for sure exactly and then like reese mentioned earlier uh with the new grab handles i do find that same Oh, is a spare brake tip for oh, later. Yeah. Um, I do find I can't really grab the bike here. It's just a little bit too high for me, like how short I am to be able to pull that up. That's all this kind of leverage. So I do still move the bike here once in a while though. I did actually put 
a little bit of grip tape. Ah, so okay, like yeah. Like the skateboard tape, if you just go to like yep. a skateboard shop or an um, industrial supply or a Home Depot or wherever, yep. you can just buy the grip tape and it just gives you a little bit more, you know, grip with your gloves and things like that, uh, just so it's not too slippery. I do find though that it is just a little bit too high for myself to yeah. pull up from here, so I just just use the plastic yeah yeah it's a great idea and i remember the betas had it as well the betas had their um their lift handle was back just a little bit further um so you could get a little bit more leverage when you went to pull on the bike but this is just a little bit too far forward so that's a good little tip for something in the future if they want to um upgrade the bike with the plastics and just move that back a little bit because you really need one on the back and you need one on the front Going back to that Trail Bound Co one, it's not just a normal strap which cuts into your hand when you're pulling on. It's got this really nice, I don't know if it's real or faux leather um, cover over it, but it's really good to grab onto. It's not going to cut into people's hands when they're dragging the bike up. So anyway, let's gear up and uh, get out on the trail and try these things out. Awesome.